Bones in the Attic is an intergenerational group exhibition exploring the recurring and ongoing societal issues affecting women. Works in the exhibition are from the Hulane Gallery collection alongside invited Irish artists. In every age, stigmas are placed on women, leading to devastating consequences. It is the female body what bears judgment to verbal, physical, and mental critique. The COVID pandemic lockdown impacted hugely on victims of domestic abuse and saw an escalation in violence against women in our society. What is most alarming is that it continues to rise. This exhibition explores ancient Irish mythologies and histories, the historical narrative of feminine sensibility and its survival, as well as the renewed challenges that face each generation. Bones in the Attic aspires to look back to feminine tradition and to the strong archetypes of the pre-Christian era. One of the major figures in this exhibition, the Kyluk, or wise woman, is one of the oldest Irish mythological deities, translating to witch or hag in its most basic form. This mother goddess figure personifies the Celtic landscape and environment and symbolizes the feminine origins of our existence. The title, Bones in the Attic, is inspired by the meeting of St. Patrick with the Kyluk. Following a quick exchange, St. Patrick banishes the Kyluk after surrendering to count the endless amounts of bones representing the duration of her existence. The artworks in this exhibition are all connected under this commonality of ancient and future sisterhood. Our intention with Bones in the Attic is to continue the important conversations that are currently happening in Ireland in the various cultural disciplines. This is a celebration of what women have achieved so far and safeguarding the future of feminism for all. This work is by Belfast artist Rita Duffy. Her work covers themes of identity, history and politics. This work is upholstered in hairpins, the common and the comfortable, with the sharp and the dangerous. Sofa raises issues of territory and underlying violence mirroring the threats to women's safety within the home. This is a quasi-surreal piece and transforms essentially familiar and non-threatening objects, a sofa and hair clips, by combining them in an unusual way. Learning to Smell the Smoke is by artist Eleanor McCorhey. This work covers themes of displacement, loss of faith and belonging. McCorhey started this work at the start of the pandemic, after which she went through two operations for endometriosis, leaving the artist physically exhausted and emotionally changed. During this period of recovery, McCorhey was given votive objects from the devotional members of her family. For this work, McCorhey has been inspired by these objects that she was given and has created these giant sculptures within the space. Walking into the gallery becomes an immersive experience, accompanied by the soundscape created with this work. Jessie Jones threw a spotlight on feminism and women's issues when she represented Ireland at the 57th Venice Biennale with her work Tremble Tremble. This work is particularly informed by the growing female bodily autonomy movement in Ireland. When fully installed, this work transforms the space into a multimedia installation and reimagines feminist history and law. These objects on display show the artist's ongoing research into ritual practices and mythologies associated with witchcraft. Tremble Tremble also was added recently to the Hulane Gallery collection. This Shudanigig object has been cast in bronze as a reproduction of the Sheen and the Gig that currently exists in the British Museum. The artist has had to change the work by 30% in order to create it and has formed this wonderful coiled tail of other Sheen and the Gigs wrapping around it. This wax hand is a cast of the artist's mother, Jenny Jones. This next object is a miniature courthouse and is actually used in the film Tremble Tremble where the giantess is looming over this object. 
This object is wrapped in wax, representing the ritualistic objects that Jesse has also included as part of this display. These objects consist of a wooden board around which a thin wax candle is wrapped, usually placed on a family tomb and lit on all Sundays, but particularly on All Saints Day, and is a light to show souls the way and chase away the darkness. These were usually lit by the women of the house or the eldest daughter and placed on the family tomb in the church. This is a bill to repeal the act of sorcery and witchcraft and was donated to the artist by legal activist Mairead Enright. It was displayed at the entrance to the Tremble Tremble exhibition in the Venice Biennale and act as a protection spell for the work. Alice Maher's artistic practice spans painting, sculpture, photography, drawing, animation and video. In particular, she is recognised as undermining traditional ex expectations of female identity. These five etchings by Alice Maher is from the Conversation series. Each work can, contains two elements that are speaking to each other and are inspired by her childhood in County Tipperary when she was immersed in nature. There are some iconic images in these works, such as the bee dress and representations of hair. Hair is very prevalent in Alice Maher's work and can symbolize something sensuous and erotic, but too much hair and it becomes barbaric. This work by Ruby Wallace is titled A Woman Walks Alone at Night with a Camera. On display are images focusing on the experience of walking at night as a woman. This work centers on the figure of the flanous, framed here as a subversive, imaginative explorer who wanders the city according to her desire, deterritorializing an urban landscape traditionally seen as a male domain. This work addresses an urgent need for liberating representations constructed by a female gaze and confronts the issues women face when they walk in the city day or night. This installation by Sarah Jane Booth confronts domestic violence against women. It's titled, For All Our Grievous Doings, and opens a dialogue across the ongoing history of violence against women. This collection of objects is a combination of opulent materials and discarded domestic objects. The artist has also embroidered a poem taken from the Dead Girls Speak in Unison Book of Poetry by Danielle Parfunda and has embroidered it on this doily displayed on the table. Sarah Jane Booth also initiated and heads up the Collective Rage, which stands for Realising Absolute Gender Equality. This work by Miri Carton is an observational documentary film and captures an intimate portrait with her mother. The camera becomes the object in which the artist can communicate personal questions and comments on their relationship, while interspersed with footage of the artist as an impressionable teenager with her friends, growing up in the early noughties in rural Donegal. From the Hewland Gallery collection is by Cathy Prendergast, titled Waiting. Here, three seated female figures dressed in 19th century gowns suggest not only femininity, but passivity. Waiting is a comment on the Irish dance halls that the artist's mother would have frequented as a young woman. The women were seated on the sidelines, waiting to be asked to dance, resigned and accepting. Prendergast's work explores themes of love, death and loss for the use of complex variety of materials. Her unconventional juxtapositions, at times ironic, challenge our everyday associations, and it is this strangeness that resonates with the viewer. This work by Dorothy Cross is titled Shark Lady in a Ball Dress and is highly symbolic. Sharks are commonly seen to signify fret, aggression, and fear, and they are also generally assumed to be male. But in this sculpture, 
the aggressor turns out to be female and protrudes from a delicate ball gown which would have once been worn by Cross's grandmother. The bronze sculpture is both grotesque and endearing, repellent and wittingly amusing, but succeeds in providing a strong challenge to traditional presumptions of dominance and aggression as male qualities and the female as docile and essentially a passive object of desire. The collective Nakailika translates as the witches. This group of eight women, all almost in their 70s, explore what it means to be older and the strategies to overcome the challenges of aging. The eight members in Nakailika embrace a wide variety of creative practices which includes sculpture, painting, filmmaking, composing, writing, and performing. Between them, they share well over 500 years of experience of being women as artists, as curator, writers, and as composer. Each explores attitudes to aging, bodies, and their place in the art world, their feminisms, and the different cultural heritages. The doll project on display here is derived from a fierce desire to reassert the value of play, creativity, and memory. Each artist made a life-size rag doll from old bed sheets, and these became like their alter egos and explored their individual identities for each member. These were then later photographed by member Terry Rudden. The three dolls on display here represent three of the members of Nakailika, Catherine Marshall, Gerda Teljur, and Helen Comerford. Marshall has dyed the bedsheets, which she saved from her attendance to a boarding school. The dye is to remind herself that we're all descended from the African Eve, also known as the mitochondrial Eve, and mindful of the strength and endurance of that prehistoric figure. Marshall has also added some contemporary references, such as the Repeal the Eighth canvas that was created for the protests. Her doll's pose also references Albert Dürer's Melancholia painting and symbolizes the mixture of ambition, skill, and frustration that are all part of the creative process. This next doll is by Gerda Teljur, who was born in the Netherlands but has been living in Ireland since the 1960s. Her doll is titled Maeve. Maeve is her alter ego and is seated here with red and yellow and pink hair, inspired by the color of mosses and grasses from the feather beds located in South County Dublin. She is the white woman or wise woman and inspired by the Queen Maeve of Celtic legend. The next doll by Helen Comerford is inspired by her trip to Turkey, where she experienced 30 miniature Venuses taken from the Mediterranean area and dating around 30,000 years old. These were created as nurturing beings of the earth. They have exaggerated body parts hinting to fertility and childbearing. Comerford's doll is a homage to the best known of these Venuses, the Venus of Wellendorp. These paintings by Amanda Doran highlights the transformative process of a contemporary woman's experience with identity as she journeys from a vivacious yet insecure young female in her 20s to finding her footing in the world and discovering a grounded path to travel and celebrate womanhood in her 30s. These works deal with issues of identity in the body, beauty standards and the grotesque. Bows in the Attic is on display until the 30th of October and is accompanied by a diverse education programme and a publication which will be released in autumn.